When you think about Metal Gear Solid V, what comes to mind? The game itself or some more complicated thoughts involving Konami and Kojima and PT and Death Stranding and Silent Hills and Junji Ito and Norman Reedus? There are a lot of moving parts here. Metal Gear Solid V came out years ago, but I still think about it nearly every day. There's no shortage of interesting topics branching off the main subject of the game itself, but people tend to focus on how the game was basically unfinished or the Konami-Kojima split. Much like a certain other unfinished Kojima project, discussions adjacent to the game often overshadow the conversations we could be having about the design of the game itself. I get it. The Konami drama is deeply interesting and or upsetting, and I'm even working on an in-depth video series about Kojima's entire career. So I'm not just saying that stuff isn't worth talking about. What I'm saying here is that some of the most interesting parts of Metal Gear Solid V are getting ignored due to all that drama. People talk about the game design of other mainline games ad nauseum, but it's pretty rare that you see Metal Gear Solid V get the deep dive analysis that some of the other games in the series get. That's why today, I want to talk to you about some of the hidden gems of Metal Gear Solid V's design. If you've played the game, we can nerd out in the comments about some of these things, but if you haven't, hopefully this can convince you to get it. It's like 20 bucks on PS4 right now, come on man. Let's start with the basics. The game controls amazingly well. Movement is diverse in scope, yet simple in execution, letting you do everything from full-on Tom Cruise running to this absurd pool noodle roll. You've got a great amount of options at your fingertips, but they're all in small radial sub-menus brought up by modifier buttons like the triggers. Even then, you often choose your gear going into a mission, so if there's a useless menu option, it's your fault for bringing the item there in the first place. You can pet dogs, poop, choke people, throw ammo, shoot a car, steal a car, super steal a car. The options can be staggering, but after some time with the game, you develop your own strategies and loadouts and you enter your own personalized flow state. This is something that plenty of games try to sell you. Unparalleled freedom in a vast open world where your choices can change the game. Cool, I can control the weather and also if I headshot too much, the guards buy helmets and I gotta send my men to the Walmart to go steal all the helmets so the bad guys don't have the helmets anymore. Far Cry 5 does have a bear named Cheeseburger though, so I guess you got me there. Here's the real meat though. The Kojima moments. In other Metal Gear games, Kojima hides little easter eggs and weird options and secrets all over the damn place. Not to mention that some of the design itself is wholly unique to his games alone. Metal Gear Solid has some crazy things like Psycho Mantis reading your memory card or switching controller ports to beat him. Metal Gear Solid 2 has that protagonist flip, naked cartwheels, and like a million other things. Metal Gear Solid 3 has the fight or lack thereof with the end, making snake yards, making you pull the trigger on the boss, and that ladder. Metal Gear Solid 4 had the microwave hallway, insane fake TV commercials, it was arguably a bad game on purpose, and uh, eggs. Eggs. Metal Gear Solid 5 had no shortage of this zany brilliance. Here's one example of a game objective and mechanic that I've never seen anywhere else. About two thirds through the game, your base gets infected with a parasite. Before you really know how it works or what it is, you have to look at your entire crew in the soldiers menu and see if there's something in common with the ones that are sick so you can cut down on casualties and quarantine the ones that are sick. Turns out it's only affecting those troops that speak a certain language. Not only is different languages set up as a mechanic in, like, Mission 2, but this sets up the main antagonist's goal of using parasites that target the English language to destroy America and control language the world over. But just appreciate that in a game about nuclear walking tanks, I had to tell the Afrikaans speakers to go gargle salt water or whatever. Video games, man. For my money, the unforgettable mission in Metal Gear Solid V is shining lights even in death. While you're out doing your thing in the jungle or whatever, you find out that the quarantine bay on your base is going buck wild with parasite infected troops, and it's up to you to sort it out. You get there and it's an absolute mess. This is a huge tonal shift from the sneaky peeky, shooty, scooty Gundam fights from earlier on, but since there are some more horror aspects earlier on in the game, this isn't really a jarring shift, just changing to a gear you've already been in. You go upstairs and find out that essentially, the parasites are infecting the English-speaking troops and making them head to the roof so they can spread the parasite to more people. Snake gets mobbed by a group of his own men and makes the decision that he needs to put them down as they're essentially brain dead. This would be a sad plot development already, but the twist here is that the names of the folks you're taking out are real troops that you extracted from the battlefield or recruited otherwise. Eventually, Kaz tells you that you have to take out every person showing infection signs in the entire quarantine bay, zombie mode or not. Since nobody had a gas mask on when this entire thing started, everyone but Snake is infected. Every troop that you kill makes your eye droid chime in that a comrade has died. Both has died. For every single one. 
You finally make your way to a room with a group of your soldiers in it. They tell you that they understand, they salute you, and they hum a familiar tune. And then you kill them. Then Snake makes some depression oval teen and makes the ashes of the soldiers lost in that quarantine bay into diamonds that he and the remaining soldiers take into battle. Honestly, I could make a 90 minute video on every little detail I love about this game, but I'm just gonna spare me the work and you the time and go through a couple more small examples. You can develop a water gun that messes up communications equipment for the bad guys, but you can also use it on the scary fireman to make him sad, and you can develop an option to make Kiefer Sutherland yell this. You got your standard snake box, but this time you can put a picture of a sexy lady or a sexy guy on there and the soldiers will react accordingly. In Metal Gear Solid 3, it's up to you to pull the trigger and kill your boyfriend's mom. Metal Gear Solid 5 has moments like that too. The twist is that when you get the you know you have to do it to him cam, you don't have to do it to him. If you chose not to execute Skullface, Huey steps in and you get a little comedic moment. When faced with killing Quiet, you can either kill her and complete the mission, or you can spare her and get a really useful teammate. Your little puppy friend is totally optional too, and you can dress him up like a little fox with a little murder suit. <laughs> You're a good dog. Man, I, I just like this game a lot. It is really easy to get hung up on the fact that the story isn't complete. And it's easy to talk about all the fuck Konami stuff too. It's easy with this or any other game to get caught up in the minutia of negativity with games or movies or literally anything. Don't do the easy thing. Try to overanalyze a recent game the same you would an old classic, warts and all. Metal Gear Solid 5 got perfect scores from multiple reviewers and outlets despite a truncated dev cycle that limited what could have been. Still, shortly after launch, the game itself got pushed aside for some juicy drama. Do not let the controversy make these gems stay hidden. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite part of Metal Gear Solid 5 was, or your favorite Kojima just thing in general is. Uh, let me know how excited you are for Death Stranding. Uh, Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus lives on. Uh, I think that's it. Never be game over. I hope you have a great day today and every day thereafter. Peace.